Athena Manufacturing, uh, we're an Austin-based manufacturing facility. We employ 250 to 300 employees at any given time, and we support uh, primarily the semiconductor industry. It's the main issue that we're seeing is being able to hire competent, experienced workers for our specialized processes like uh, welding, grinding, and machine tending. Some other problems that we were facing were um, repeatability, uh, reliability, and capacity. We were really constrained in our capacity because of our limited space and limited resource of new employees that are experienced enough to come in and start producing right away. Our current Cobot setup is that we have two Cobots that are servicing one large Siegman table. Uh, that's our large frame production area. Uh, we've got four or five interchangeable fixtures for four or five different part numbers that we produce on that one table. Uh, we have one Cobot that is set up independently and it's only set up on its own smaller Siegman table. That builds our smaller, higher volume production parts. The, th the fourth Cobot is set up on its own table. Um, it utilizes a Vention turntable uh, that is programmable through the Beacon app. Uh, the Universal Robot, Beacon, and Vention software all collaborates together in one app, the Beacon app. Having the, the Cobots has allowed us to hire and train inexperienced operators, someone that doesn't have any formal welding knowledge. Um, that being said, we're not removing any jobs in our manual weld department. Um, in fact, we're, we've, we're still adding manual weld stations, um, potentially in the very near future, adding more cobot stations and more inexperienced operators to that work center, but it has not removed any jobs from any uh, experienced welders. It's very good to show that kind of innovation to our customers. They see us uh, as a forefront, even though we're in a ramp, we're investing, making investments on technology. Uh, we're kind of controlling our own destiny. We're not just relying on the work pool and the people out there. We're actually investing in the equipment. So for us, it's been a very good marketing tool for us, for our customers. Um, some of the challenges that we've come across are, are building robust enough fixturing. With our type of work, um, the repeatability um, and tolerances are, are really tight. An average tolerance for one of our welded components is between 15 thousandths and 60 thousandths. Uh, a lot of the repeatability is how you build and design your fixturing and maintain your fixturing, uh, but the Cobots themselves were, were able to uphold the tolerances that, that we require for the type of work that we do. Uh, the impact that the Hyrobotics Cobots have had on our production are increased um, capacity. We have multiple projects where in a manual weld setting the part takes approximately seven to eight hours to complete and we've decreased that run time to two to two and a half hours. So we've increased our capacity greatly. That's just one part number. All, every, every part that we've put on the Cobots has decreased the production time and increased the reliability and uniformity of each part. Uh, as a comparison between the Hyrobotics and a traditional robot, uh, the larger parts that I've programmed took approximately a day to completely program. That's, that's multiple programs, a few hundred points, um, what probably would have taken me two weeks to completely program on a traditional robot. I would, I would tell somebody looking at purchasing their first hyrobotic equipment to invest in your fixturing and to invest in your employees uh, more than anything. Uh, those are the two factors that are going to make or break your cobot production line.